I've been a web developer for more than 15 years and I thought I've seen it all, but it looks like this industry can still surprise me. I recently ran into this blog post claiming that Gleam, a language built for the Erlang virtual machine, just made JavaScript 30% faster. Yeah, I know how that sounds, so we really need to talk about it. Gleam is a really interesting language. It was first released in March 2024, it is statically typed, functional, immutable by default, and compiles to both Erlang and JavaScript. It looks like an awkward mix between Elm and OCaml and runs on the battle-tested, fault-tolerant Erlang VM. This is the same platform powering WhatsApp, RabbitMQ, and half the telecom industry. That's real software that runs on billions of devices, affects half of the world when it crashes, and addresses problems more serious than how to render a React component on the server. And yet somehow, despite its serious backend credentials, Gleam also targets JavaScript. And it does it in a smart, efficient manner, without dragging in a runtime, a framework, or a pile of spaghetti code just to achieve reactive hydration. You write Gleam, and it spits out clean, readable JS. And because the language is statically typed with no null, undefined, or implicit coercion, it avoids a whole category of bugs that JavaScript developers are used to dealing with. What's more important is that Gleam's pattern matching is exhaustive and enforced at compile time. If you forget to handle a variant, your code won't compile. That means fewer runtime surprises and less defensive programming. This kind of discipline leads to better performance too. The Gleam to JS compiler generates code that's not only readable, but also avoids dynamic branching and redundant checks. It translates directly to efficient JavaScript, skipping the typical runtime wrappers that plague other compiled to JS languages. The surprising part is that in some benchmarks, this approach actually beats handwritten JavaScript by around 30% in performance. But this is not because Gleam is doing anything magical, it's because the generated code avoids a lot of the dynamic behaviors that slow JavaScript down. Static analysis and strong typing let the compiler emit simpler, more direct code paths. But I have to stress out that despite its focus on JavaScript, Gleam is not a toy language. It was originally designed to work with Erlang's Beam virtual machine, and that's worth digging into. The Beam isn't just fast or scalable, in the way those words get thrown around in web dev, where downloading thousands of lines of JS to render some buttons on a page is considered a best practice. Beam was designed from day one for building systems that never go down. You get lightweight isolated processes, no shared memory, built-in supervision strategies, and seamless hotcode upgrades. The model is very different from the thread or async-based concurrency most web devs are used to. Every process in Beam is isolated, cheap to create, and communicates only through message passing. There's no shared state, no mutexes, and no deadlocks. Thanks to built-in supervisors that monitor everything, when a process crashes, it doesn't bring down the whole system, it simply restarts. This fault-tolerant mindset is baked into the ecosystem. Erlang developers don't write defensive code everywhere because the system can crash safely and recover instantly. Gleam brings that model into a statically typed language without the awkward syntax or runtime quirks of Erlang. So when people say Gleam made JavaScript faster, what they really mean is that Gleam enforces discipline. It removed undefined behavior, it eliminated runtime guessing, and it generated code that's straightforward, optimized, and boring in the best possible way. And in a world where most JavaScript frameworks get slower, the more features they add, this kind of boring is a breath of fresh air. If you liked this breakdown, you might find some of my other videos interesting as well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and until next time, thanks for watching.